Hey guys, thank you very much for joining me for this video. And uh, you know, a couple, of days ago, a couple of days ago I wrote a post on my new blog, which I will link down in the description. It's like an introduction to lenses, you know, like uh, very basic stuff for beginners. And I thought, why not make a video out of it? So this video will help beginner photographers choose and actually approach like buying their first lens for their interchangeable lens camera. And if you are uh, if you are just a beginner and you have your first camera with maybe a kit lens and you want to buy another lens, I think this video will help you. Because today I'm going to go through the very basics of uh, basic parameters and basic like characteristics of uh, lenses. And uh, by the end of this video, hopefully you'll be able to determine which lens suits your camera and how to actually find the lens for you. So without further ado, let's start from the, thank you, let's start from the very beginning. What, how actually lenses are attached to your camera? And this is called lens mount. So there are actually, there are more than one uh, types of lens mounts and you should know that because uh, your camera has a particular type of lens attachment. And it's, uh, it says in the manual or on the box, just uh, dig inside the manual, read through the manual, and you will see uh, what kind of uh, actually mount your camera supports. Uh, this is important because, because if you do not know this and you uh, buy a lens with uh, like a different mount and you try to like force it uh, onto your camera, you will break both your lens and your camera. And that's like a lot of money wasted, the most popular uh, types uh, and variants of lens attachments uh, today are like RF mount, uh, that's for Canon R, uh, Fujifilm X, uh, what else, Sony E or NEX, uh, Nikon Z or the old one Nikon F, um, etc. Well, uh, the, the rule of thumb here is to again uh, read through in the manual of your camera and see what kind of lens attachment type of lens attachment your camera supports and then just find the, uh, the same line uh, when buying and choosing your lens that's actually very simple but that's a very basic thing to know in order not to just buy a wrong thing and break your camera so our second so our second characteristic of a lens is sensor coverage so it means that not every not every single lens can uh, be can can be suitable uh, for every type of camera sensor. Your camera might have a full frame sensor, a APS-C or crop sensor, uh, micro four thirds sensor, one inch sensor if you have a really like tiny camera, pocket camera, and uh, those are actually the most popular um, sizes of camera sensors and you need to know that again you can find it in your camera manual and uh, again it's just the size and it will say like sensor CMOS or like APS-C uh, which is a disambiguation for like a crop sensor camera then uh, when you are actually browsing through various lenses uh, you should actually look for um, like the line which says uh, for which type and which size of sensor this lens is actually for. Uh, so, for example, it might be only covering a, an APS-C sensor, crop sensor, and in this case, if you just buy a crop sensor lens and put it on your full frame camera, you will have this terrible, like, uh, crazy vignette around the frame of your picture on your video, and you cannot actually get rid of that. You can crop in, but what's the point then of buying this lens if you just need will be? And the last point for this video is lens types. But before I list all of those types, I'm gonna need to tell you something. Um, two more parameters about all of those lenses by which the lenses are compared today. Uh, those are the lowest f-stop and uh, lenses focal length. Both of those parameters can be fixed or they can be variable. Uh, so, for example, if a lens is has fixed focal length, it will say something like uh, 85 millimeters, just 85 or like uh, 14, 24, 35, 50, 105, and etc. Uh, if your focal length, or the focal length of the lens is variable, it will say something 16 to 35, um, 24 to 70, 70 to 200 
so this is called a zoom lens. It means that you can zoom. So from 70 to 200. And well, that's it. It can just zoom. And if your lens has uh, two like focal length, it can have a one or two uh, values of your f-stop. For example, this lens is a 70 to 200 f4, which means that you can dial f4 at both ends at 70 and 200 millimeters. This is actually a really good lens and uh, those lenses with this parameter will probably be a bit more expensive. And uh, just to make an example, uh, the um, lens, for example, 16 to 50 f3.5 to 5.6 so see, uh, not only focal length is variable, but the f-stop is also variable, which means that at 16 millimeters you will be able to dial f3.5, and on the other end, at 50 millimeters, you will be able to dial f5.6. Those lenses are tend to be a bit more, a bit less expensive and more affordable, and this is probably mm, the way to go for a beginner. And Maybe you already have a kit lens that's, um, that has those sort of values. Um, so these are the parameters that are very crucial, that are very important while um, picking your new lens. So this brings us to the lens types, actually. So the first one is wide-angle lens. Wide-angle lenses are a lenses, lenses that have a wide angle of view, so that's nothing complicated. The only thing, and again, those lenses can be primes or zooms. They can have fixed or variable focal length, and the same goes for their aperture values. Uh, they're mostly used for uh, nature, for landscapes, for cityscapes, for um, architecture photography. Uh, but if you go to extreme, uh, so like maybe below 14 millimeters, it will be a fisheye lens. And uh, fisheye lenses are, they like, they distort everything. It looks cool in different situations, but uh, it's not its so-called special lens. And uh, as a beginner, you probably don't need that. Um, now, after the wide-angle lenses comes come uh, standard lenses. Standard lenses are something like maybe between 24 to 50 millimeters. Uh, those are like they are called standard lenses, and uh, it's actually a go-to for everything, like almost everything. If you need a travel lens, standard focal length lens will be your guy, will be your lens. Um, again, like 16 to 35, um, 24 to 70. Uh, 24 to 70 is actually, it's actually ideal. It's actually a gem of a lens. Um, so between like 24, 50 and maybe 24 to 70, is a really like a very good lens, um, very good standard focal length for travel, for everything. Now, uh, the next type of lens is telephoto lens. Telephoto lenses have a bit narrower, like angle of view, and they help uh, help isolate the subject from the background and from other like unnecessary distractions around the subject, and. Well, if you have, for example, like this. So this again, this is a telephoto lens. It's a 70 to 200. So which means that this is a zoom lens, which has a uh, like a more, a bit wider angle of view at 70 millimeters. And it has um, a very narrow angle of view at 200 millimeters. Um, so it helps really isolate my subject when I'm taking photos in uh, like in the city, well, street photography. Uh, it actually really, it's actually really good for portraits. It helps me isolate my subject from the background and it uh, actually blurs uh, the background really in a beautiful way. So those are telephoto lenses. They tend to be uh, on the expensive side and I think that I would not recommend a telephoto lens for a beginner because it's more like, it's not very special light lens, but remember that uh, the more the focal length, the more is the minimum focusing distance. So, for example, with this 70 to 200, I can focus on things that are uh, like three to four feet in front of me and nothing closer. So, at least three to four feet. And then this lens will be able to focus on it. 
Um, now, and the last, um, that's actually a sort of a derivative uh, type uh, from the telephoto. This is super telephoto. I do not have any super telephoto lenses. And believe me, this is not a lens for a beginner. Because those lenses are, they're used by like wildlife photographers, maybe sports photographers who shoot like uh, from across the field. And if you are a wildlife photographer, you're just gonna, I don't know, take a picture of a lion without approaching it. Uh, those telephoto lens, super telephoto lenses are maybe from 300 millimeters up to, uh, I don't know, 800 millimeters, 600 to 80 to 800 millimeters. So they are like crazy expensive. Uh, 11, uh, $11,000 easily. So that's a actually an actual lens from Sony, uh, which costs $11,000 and it's a prime, super telephoto prime. Again, mm, not a beginner lens. Um, so those, uh, those are the types of our lenses. And uh, I wanna actually mention a couple more things uh, that are Mm, that you might stumble upon while um, browsing and choosing your lens. Um, so the first one is autofocus and uh, its capability to focus automatically. Uh, the rule of thumb here is to just pick a lens by the same manufacturer as your camera. Uh, chances are, and those chances are like 99.99999, uh, that your lens will have autofocus. And as a beginner, again, you need autofocus because you don't want to like fiddle around with this uh, manual focusing ring and uh, everything will be out of focus and um, you don't need that. Uh, things that you actually don't need to consider. Filter thread sizes. Again, if you are not uh, intending to shoot uh, like um, time lapses, hyperlapses, uh, you don't need ND filters. If you are not, if you are not going to shoot, I don't know, uh, like landscapes on a tripod, so stars and all of those things. You won't need your um, your photo filters, your, and therefore you don't need to actually bother with filter thread sizes. Next point that you are that you should not care about is elements and groups. Um, if you just open any like uh, any um, specs of a lens online, you will see it has like three elements in 16 groups or like 13 elements in 17 groups. I don't know, something like that. And uh, those are just like optical, optical parameters. It just says uh, how many uh, glass and plastic uh, things it has inside of it. And it really doesn't change uh, anything for a beginner and probably even for a pro photographer because, well, I don't really care about that. Uh, just seriously, don't bother. It's only complicating, it complicates everything. Uh, and the next uh, thing that you should not care about is minimum focus distance. I know I said that I just said about uh, when I was talking about this lens, I said something about minimum focus distance. But again, if you are just, um, if you buy a standard lens and you will be uh, taking photo, photos of your family, of your like travel, of uh, landscapes, uh, you will not be shooting things that are like this close to your lens. So you, you will not be shooting macro. And again, if you need to shoot something very close to your camera, like, um, I don't know, uh, insects, uh, flowers, um, rings, jewelry, maybe food, you don't need a macro lens and therefore just don't bother with minimum focusing distance. Um, and the last thing, if your lens um, has image stabilization, that's a really cool bonus because, well, you can live with it, without it, but it's a really nice thing to have. So for example, Canon lenses, uh, not Canon, um, Nikon lenses, uh, they say like VR, so which stands for vibration reduction. Uh, Sony lenses, actually it uh, says something like OSS, optical steady shot, which is Sony's uh, propri uh, proprietary um, stabilization system, in s which is made like inside of the lens. And well, I don't know what else to say. Um, I think that's it, that uh, all the things that you need to know um, while browsing and while choosing your first lens. And again, if you need to um, have this information in a form of a like text, 
Uh, I will link in the description my blog post, which is just the same thing, but with words. So go there and read it. And um, if you have any questions, please leave them down below. I'll be happy to answer. And um, thank you guys for watching this video. And hopefully I will continue to make those kind of educational videos for beginners. And if you have any suggestions, um, just leave them down below in the comment section. And thank you for watching. And I will see you in my next video.